Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Bernie and today I will show you how to make a YouTube thumbnail using only Final Cut Pro 10. And not only that, I will show you the easy way. So let's jump now to Final Cut Pro 10 and it's gonna be exciting. And right now I will show you how to make a simple and uh, I would say appealing title for your audience. So here we go right now. I'm in Final Cut Pro 10. So first and foremost, before you actually jump in to creating a thumbnail is you have to film your thumbnail. So make it a point that whenever you record your video, you do your thumbnail as well. You record your thumbnail as well. So like you're gonna see here, this is my thumbnail shot basically. And I have a lot of uh, different poses. Look at that. And since this is a my comparison, maybe you can tell already that uh, I have a different uh, ways of uh, posing the mics as well as myself in the frame. And we are going to basically look for something here, like a frame. And basically this particular shot was filmed using a Sony ZB-1 and it's actually 4K, 23.98 frame rate and uh, I actually uh, look for the best uh, screenshot here I like the one with uh, my arms crossed okay so we'll do this right now and uh, when I shoot my uh, thumbnails I don't shoot in photo mode I just roll the camera so that I can do a lot of uh, different poses or maybe different shots in one take or different arrangements of uh, the product so it'll be easier for me to sync or even edit the thumbnail so right now I chose this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an in and let it play a little bit and out. Okay. So as you can see here on this particular thumbnail here or preview, you can see the in and out points. So it's yellow. So after doing the in and out, you just go to file new and new project. So what we're going to do is basically make a new project specifically for our thumbnail. So it says here project name. So what I do guys is I just put any title. Let's say for example here, it's a uh, Mike comparison, and then underscore YT underscore TN. So YT is YouTube and TN is thumbnail so that I have a reference later on and I won't miss the file. So next, after naming the project, you go to video here and choose custom. Why custom? Because we want our resolution to be 2560 by 1440. And uh, we don't have any choices here of uh, the 2560 resolution. Okay, so might as well click custom right now. So here, look at the 1920, right? You will change this to value 2560. And next, this 1080 will be changed to 1440. Why is that it's supposed to be 2560 and 1440? Because that's what they recommend, all right? Not unless they change it. So correct me if I'm wrong if uh, this is not the case anymore, but this is how I do it. 2560 by 1440. And now for rate, this one actually doesn't matter because we're just gonna do a uh, JPEG file later on for our export. But I choose 2398 since this one was filmed using the 23.98 frame rate. Next, projection type, normal, and now rendering. So it says here, Apple ProRes 422. What I like to use all the time is Apple ProRes 422 HQ. HQ meaning high quality. It's just that I'd uh, rather choose that than just the 422 alone. It's just me, <laughs> but you know, maybe you won't see a difference, but for me, I like it better. So standard Rec 709, stereo 48 kilohertz, it doesn't matter. So click OK. Now look at this area. We now have a new timeline. We now have the my comparison underscore YT underscore TN. All right, so we will go back to bin. So I'm gonna go back and click it again and see, it has to have this color. And then you go to the eye and you will see that it's 2560 by 1440, 2398p. So this is a good practice for you to be able to know if you have the correct settings. So anyway, so now going back to the timeline, what we're gonna do is to add a gap. So for you to be able to add gap, press option W. What this does is I like using gaps because Final Cut Pro has magnetic timeline. Yeah, maybe you're gonna say, 
Oh, why don't you utilize magnetic timeline? Well, for me, uh, it's easier for me if I have a gap in the bottom so that I can move easily all my audio without even uh, thinking about being not synchronized at all whenever I change a lot of stuff, a lot of clips. But here, we're going to be doing the same thing. So right now, after putting the gap, you go again to your folder here. So we'll go to ZV1 since I like to name my files that way. Camera name. So it's easier for me to look for the clips. And as you can see here, the first one, look at what we did earlier, right? You can see that there's this in and out. So what we're going to do is to just click that and then press Q on your keyboard. And voila, it's on our timeline. So let's zoom out a little bit. And then press home to go to the first frame. So this is the one, this is the frame basically that we wanted. So what you're going to do next is we're going to add freeze frame. So what it does is basically you're just getting like a photo or something, like a screenshot of your particular video clip. So how you do that is to go to edit and then add freeze frame. Or you can just press option F. There you go. See, as you can see here, Look at here, this particular image is kind of like a screenshot of uh, that video file. See, when I move the playhead, look at that. It's moving. So right now we're going to delete this part because we don't need this anymore. So delete, just delete that. And we just need this part. So yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, it's actually very easy. And right now, what I'm going to do next is... So since this is a comparison uh, video, it's nice that we have this particular shot because, see, you can see my other mic here, the uh, EVR E27ND compared to the Rode Pod mic. So next, that we're going to do is to add title or text. Now we're going to go here, look for the custom. Where is custom? All right, custom. Then press Q. It doesn't really matter where it lands. Then go here to inspector and put your text. I'd say dollar sign, then 99. And then what I'm going to do is I don't really like the Helvetica or the default font. Never ever use a default font for your videos, guys. So basically what I'd suggest is you stick to, let's say, three of your favorite fonts like me i love using the avenir next and man there's something about it that i really like so we'll change this to avenir next so highlight this 99 dollar go here helvetica and look for the avenir text yes there you go the avenir next and we want it to be the heavy italic i like the heavy italic and here size put it like that uh, you can put 300. All right. And now I want this particular uh, text to be on this side. So what we're going to do is to click this area, this icon, and then we can now move it here. I think our size is too big. You know what? You can see here the table, right? Just like a line, kind of like a straight line. So I want to position my number here so it will look like symmetrical next is you want to do another text so what i do is i'll just copy this one or duplicate it so by holding option and then click hold and drag to the top and now click that other text so see here drag it so you can see 99 but we'll change it to 499 and now we'll be able to change it to 499 see it's looking good already so again, I want it to be symmetrical. So that's why I just, I'm just putting everything straight to the table. And wow, it's looking pretty nice already. I like it like that. You can see it's looking good already, right? $99 versus $4.99 microphone. So this one alone will tell your viewer that this is all about my comparison by just uh, looking at the price and basically the frame of the shot. So right now I have this MTuber 2 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, an arrow, this one, this arrow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this arrow to add to the element or to add a graphical element to my clip. So it will be way, way appealing if I have this arrow. So let's add it to the timeline. All right, or you can just uh, press Q and then 
make this shorter. And as you can see, it's big, right? So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to rotate this for a little bit um, like this. It says content scale will make it a little bit smaller. So click that and I'm just going to click the middle and then drag it to the left. All right, like that. And then maybe a little bit more. All right, that's looking good. Next is I want to put another arrow to the other one, the 499. So again, option, hold and drag to the top. And then you can see here, right? Because you just copied it. So what we're going to do is to click, hold this one and then drag it to the other side. And then we'll do the same thing. But this time again, we're going to mirror this one. So, so actually, guys, there you go. After uh, duplicating the arrow, as you can see here, after dragging it to the right, it's pointing to the right as well. We, we want it to point to the left this time. So how are we going to do that? Well, I have to go to effects tab and see here, I already typed flip. And it says here flip. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that this one comes with Final Cut Pro. So please correct me if I'm wrong, if it's not the case. Or if you have a better uh, suggestion or any other way of how you're going to flip that particular arrow, then by all means, comment down below and let me know. So see here, and maybe you will notice that this particular one, the uh, circle, this is the control. It's farther away from that particular graphic. So what we're going to do is just drag it to the left like that and here you see the px you just have to drag it a little bit up like that all right it's looking pretty good it doesn't really have to be uh, symmetrical this time with the arrow i think i kind of like the way it's uh, looking right now but see maybe you notice that this one has an animation right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the animation so you go here to inspector, click this one, T, and then see here animation in on and off. So off, as well as the animation out and off. So there's no animation. And uh, that's for the first uh, arrow, second arrow, we'll do the same thing. So all right, there you go, guys. We're actually done by placing some text placing some graphics and of course choosing our best uh, clip for this particular thumbnail and right now my last uh, thing to do would be to color correct it for a little bit make it pop for a little bit I'm gonna go to effects tab and remove the flip word here and then we're gonna look for cinema grade so basically i have cinema grade but uh, you can actually use the final cut pros um, color correction tool and it's easier as well, but I just like using the cinema grade this time since I have it. But definitely uh, feel free to use the color correction tool from Final Cut Pro itself. So, so there you go, guys. So once you're in cinema grade, all you got to do is to highlight the clip and then double click cinema grade. And as you can see here, inspector, we have the cinema grade added to the effect then open controls and then normally i do base correction but i think it looks pretty good already coming out from the sony camera so now we're gonna go to this tab here final grading and i wanted to adjust the uh, highlights for a little bit okay so click here uh yeah put a little bit of uh, highlight in there yeah, so basically when you click this, you can either choose exposure or this one right here, the shadows, mid-tones, highlights. This one will actually change when you're clicking the plus sign. So let's say you choose that, right? Look at this plus sign. So let's say I want to adjust my shadows. Click that. And you can see it's now a different icon, right? So you have to hold going up or down. So yeah, put a little bit of shadow in there. And now click here. This is the contrast adjustment. This will adjust the overall contrast of your clip. So just about right. I love uh, putting a lot of uh, lots or I love lots 
on my footage. So we're going to go here, see LUTs. And the LUTs that I have are already stored on my uh, hard drive. So we're just going to get uh, something from uh, White in Reverie. I love uh, White in Reverie. So we're going to choose WIR Dolce 2. Click that. Then accept and you can see here and then exit you can see it's too dark right so we can adjust the highlights again click on that and then a little bit look at that it's kind of like adding a cinematic feel to our thumbnail and i like i like what i'm seeing right now i think that looks good already and adjust the overall exposure all right and then we're done here apply then exit look at that guys awesome guys so yeah we did it so next that we're gonna do is to share save current frame so save current frame as you can see here this will be a jpeg file 2560 by 1440 23.98 fps and when you click the settings here it says your jpeg image but you can change it you can put tiff file or png image but i just choose jpeg image so yeah it's up to you if you want png or tiff file but i just use uh, jpeg image so it'll be easier for me then click next and we're just gonna look for the re27 nd folder and there you go re27 nd and the road pod mic and now this time around let's do another folder so i want my clips or my files to be organized thumbnail then create and see here save as my comparison underscore yt underscore tn and then save and it will prompt that it will be saved as soon as possible you see here final cut pro share successful and we're gonna click show so now when i click show it went to the file location so i'll double click it and voila that is our thumbnail guys so see that easy so basically you don't really have to take a picture of you instead record let the video run and just choose your best frame or best uh, clip or best still image from that video footage so there you go guys that's how you make a very easy youtube thumbnail using only final cut pro 10 because for me if I'm editing, I don't want to use another software or I don't want to go out of Final Cut Pro 10. So there you go, guys. That's about it. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a like. And don't you forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit that bell notification as well to be notified with more amazing videos or more tutorials. Who knows? Maybe in the future or more gear reviews from this channel bernie hippo so there you go guys thank you so much from the bottom of my heart i will see you next time goodbye for now